I've got the four pole set up now. It's not super efficient, but um, I just reconfigured the winding process of these coils. May make you drawing for this as well, but it seems to work. It only got four coils in there. So one out of each uh, three commutator bars is active in this situation and it seems to work. Also on this uh, setup I've changed the brushes. I'll put proper carbon brushes on here and I'll give you some close-ups on that as well. So this works quite well. Um, a few more calls to be put in here. Cogging quite strongly. Oh, there you go, and ceased. I'm going to put the other eight coils in here and see how that's going to work. I've got this uh, DC motor running quite well at the moment, um, running at 55 volts DC, and it's actually a true series motor or universal motor. The commutator sorted out a bit better too, so we've got the, the armature, and I've got a uh, couple of coils on this side, and also on the other side, which yields in. Um, on this device to get it going and I'll just try to get a better shot on this. Very hard to get rid of the wobble but um, the power comes in through these two terminals here. It goes through the series call, out of the call goes through brush number one, the commutator through the commutator to the other side, brush number two, and it goes through that call and then it comes back to the supply. So this is basically a uh, series motor slash universal motor. I'm going to put it on AC and um, that's 40 volts. This is 55 volts. I'll uh, get a reading of the meter. And uh, 40 volts runs a bit slower of course. It's furnished from this uh, small power transformator and as uh, a capacitor you can need DC. This uh, bridge uh, rectifier from an old TV set. And the motor runs at about 55 to 56 volts. And I've got it measured from the terminals here. Um, I'll try to get a close up on the commutator um, landing wires here. Uh, there we go. And an aerial view of the commutator. But this one's actually not there. Um, let the brush and I'll see the spark. These brushes, uh, you can get these from the internet quite cheap actually. They're just uh, a bag of 20 pairs of brushes, steel brushes for about uh, 2 or 3 bucks, 3 pounds. I will go in the schematic how the coils are bound from this particular uh, rotor slash armature. So there's no magnets in use on this uh, device, it's just uh, series coils rotor and another series call on the other side. The brushes haven't fully worn in yet, same as the commutator, it's just a bit wobbly, but um, yeah. I've used pencils in the past, but pencils are high resistance and it doesn't seem to work that well. I'm going to make a different rotor as well, because this one still wobbles a bit, but uh, I need to have time for it first. For the brush, Holders. I use some copper tape which comes from a high voltage cable. It's just uh, thin copper. It's all folded over in a U shape. I take one of the commutator things off and I'll show the energized device. So the brush holder is some 2.5 mil, or it's a strand from some. So I've soldered the terminal from the brush onto this bar and I glued it in this uh, copper which I had soldered on the other side here. So at least I have an, uh, yeah, a carbon brush contact with the commutator. And the commutator I've made out of uh, round segments which I hid in one of the other videos. I'll probably link it onto this. 
and I'll get a bit better light on here. So a bit of carbon uh, film on there. That's just uh, strands which have been put in uh, in some colors. And uh, yeah, that seemed to work quite well actually. Now I'm starting the motor on AC. The torque is a bit lower. Um, I'm going to put some other coils on this thing, but it's testing at the moment still. See the stroboscopic effect here. Picking up speed. So it runs at 43 volts at the moment, which is uh, here 43 volts AC. So I've taken it from uh, the transformator, which is a 40 volt transformer, unloaded, lightly loaded, so it's about 43 volts. So it's filming on the other two terminals from the output on the transformator. So this runs on AC, and while I'll swap the wires over without shorting anything out, we're going to DC and it should go faster. There, now we're going to DC, which is uh, 50, 55 volts. Uh, I'll make a quick uh, drawing of this uh, motor or the armature, how I've wound it. I don't want it to drag on too long on this video. Uh, we've tested the variac and the mains, uh, 5.5 amps. volts now, 0.6 ampere, reading from the variac, I think it's pretty good. A bit of commentation. Well, it's not perfect. It's at about 150 volts at the moment. 1.1 ampere, I just don't want to burn things out, so let's drop it down a little bit. Sounds pretty good. Not perfect, but in the name of science, it's going to make color shortly. Thanks for watching. Again, a guy's device. Well here I've made a schematic of uh, the way I found the calls on this particular thing. Four bobbins, say so commutator are the greasing segments in the middle. For example we'll go from there to the center of the call, to the outer of the call. Goes to the next one, center of the call, so as long as all the calls are wound the same way. That's a closed loop. And then for example you get the commutator brushes sitting here, they need to be opposite sides, so 180 degrees apart. So when this moves, there's a closed loop. Uh, the here have a 4, uh, this particular rotor has 12, so I'll put the additional ones in here and they've been wired up the same way. So you got 12 calls and as long as you wired up the same pattern then uh, it will work and I've got here one of the little calls as an example, hope it stays in focus. If you want any call you've got a lead in wire in the middle and the tail end comes on the outside. So as long as all the calls face in the same way and wired up the same way, it will work. Um, this particular machine could technically work with four brushes. It probably runs a lot faster, but it's very hard to get four brushes on a commutator. So I hope this helped. Um, any other questions, put it in the comments and uh, I'll give you a guide where I can. Thank you.